it's probably fair to say that of all the entities on the planet, we are least imminently present in nature. Everything we do is augmentation of some sort in order to help us be in nature. I mean, we have to wear clothes. We wouldn't survive just walking without it most likely. Um, but everything we do it, there is, is a, some kind of an augmentation in order for us to be present in the world. Phenomenon of bordering, uh, of liminality, uh, of being on the limit. This is what interests me as well. Again, all the authors that we are discussing, I think are authors who push themselves, their thought, their language, their drawing to a certain limit. What is that limit? Most likely it's a limit before one enters into madness. Um, so it's a dangerous limit. And, I, and then please, I'm saying that I'm interested in the limit, not the madness, okay? So, but reaching that, that point where you are on the border, where you are a phenomenon of that border, I think is the most interesting thing because it allows us again to define what is the capacity of life? What is the capacity of the body? What is the capacity or potential of thought? All of that can only unravel on this, on this line, which is a line of some, some kind of limit. Um, note all the other, in, in Schultz, for example, when he writes, what preoccupies him? The schizoid anatomy, the schizoid this, the schizoid that. What does schizo mean? It means a rupture. This is something I mentioned, I think, before uh, earlier too. All of these authors take these molecules, schizoid molecules, and inject them into their creative uh, output because it's necessary. Now, some descriptions of uh, schizophrenia are descriptions in which the subject, the human being is unable to perceive the ends of their own body. So, you know, the space and I, we are one. So, total and, and utter immersion in the space around me. Of course, you can just imagine not being able to see the limits of our, of our own body, where it ends, it's pretty disturbing. But this is the experiment as well uh, for us. So not to become schizophrenic, of course, which is an awful uh, and unfortunate thing, but having the sensibility to reach that point and draw from it uh, uh, creative expression and creative manifestation, which all, again also means developing particular relationship to the world, meaning other people, other entities and so on in the world. They are asking in some sense for a particular tactic of each individual. And let's say that tactic is renunciation in, you know, as one of the, one of the necessities. Uh, renunciation of everything and a continual renunciation. So is that individual? Yes, but they are asking that from every individual. Now, for me, this is super interesting politics, if you will, because it's what I told you before last time when we talked, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the only change 
if it's if it's a manifestation of proper and uh, proper change, if you will, is the change of consciousness. But this is one of the one of the ways in which to look at forms and including these multiple forms. Um, but for me, the interesting thing, the super interesting thing is that this constant, that perception of the constant diffusion between the borders of forms, uh, which allows him to enter into these descriptions, hallucinatory ideas, um, you know, allows him to go back to the, to the pre-subjective, to the pre-magistic, to the pre-linguistic and so on allows him to see the bird, uh, the reptile turning into a bird and so on and so forth. So again, this is not the first, I mean, we have ancient civilizations who have, who have had such philosophies, um, but there's something additional here, an additional inscription in the language itself and the way the language is produced how he uses it and so on.